Hi, my name is Katie Denno and I am a celebrity makeup artist and I've been in this amazing career for almost 15 years. My whole career has consisted of me flying around the world, traveling with clients, getting them ready for red carpets, photo shoots, that kind of thing. But this past year has changed all of that and I've basically become a makeup artist who specializes in Zoom calls. So I wanted to share with you a bunch of the tricks that I've learned for how to make yourself look your best and most presentable, most pulled together over Zoom. It's very simple and these are again, very baseline. So please take what works for you, discard the rest. Uh, the first thing that I wanna talk about though, before we get to makeup or skincare is lighting because lighting is everything. And as you can see, I'm very well lit right now. And as you may also be able to see behind me, the reflection of the ring light in front of me. Every makeup artist, every model, every actress knows that lighting is everything. I'm gonna show you what I look like when I turn this light off. So you see why I have that in front of me. So it's something to think about. So you may not wanna invest, oh yes, much better. You may not wanna invest in a ring light, but you could sit in front of a window. Um, daylight is always key. It's the best thing you could do for your features. It, light cascades over them so nicely. But if, if it's not daytime um, or you don't have a great window to sit in front of, you could put two lamps facing you and take the lampshades off. That's one of the things that I often do in hotel rooms to get actresses uh, red carpet ready if I don't have a, a ring light in front. So there we go, lighting and also taking into consideration what you have going on around you. For most of you, it's not gonna be appropriate for you to be coming to your Zoom call in a bathroom, but you may have a little corner in your house that has good lighting, very basic background. That's what you wanna sit in front of. Okay, so moving on to the second most important thing every makeup artist focuses on, and that is skin. Because no matter how much makeup you pile on top, if your skin doesn't look good and isn't in good condition, you've done it wrong. So the first thing that you need to know, whether you are super dry like I am or super oily or somewhere in between is figuring out your perfect skincare routine for real life as well as Zoom. This is the time to do it. So for example, for me, I use a, a hefty dose of this delicious face mist from Ranavat. I love keeping a face mist next, next to me when I'm on Zooms because in between I can give myself a little pick-me-up, give my skin a refresher. If my foundation is creasing or my concealer has moved, it helps to revive that. And then, you know, pie is a great, this is one of my favorite all-time face oils. It's really good for a variety of skin types. Um, so I gave myself a few drop massage of um, face oil. And then, because like I said, I'm very dry, I went in and gave myself on the high planes of my face only a little bit of Lolita Skin Food. That's one of those products that every makeup artist has in their bag too. Because, so unlike using a brick of highlighter uh, powder, an emollient, uh, product put down first really brings you can see how much life is in my skin, right? Okay, so then moving on to perfecting the skin. I am all about keeping it light zoom Hallelujah is very forgiving. So the pixelating really works in our favor So you don't have to be this most the most amazing makeup artist, but here are some good tools and techniques I like this foundation from EXA. Um, I put a pump or two on the back of my hand pump or two. I don't drizzle it on my face. I, that, I don't get that at all. Um, I use the brush. Whoops. I use the brush to apply it. And then I use, I love a sponge. I use a sponge. So you, I'm holding these dirty sponges up for you to see that um, this one, they're the same sponge. This one I held under a faucet and then wrung it out and then squeezed it in a towel. So it becomes a different texture. And this texture becomes the perfect tool um, with which to create the texture of skin on skin. So I am all about keeping skin looking like skin. You can still see some of my sunspots, um, but I like that and I don't want to mask a foundation. But what I do want is any blemishes, any discoloration from scarring, anything like that. I want to hide those and I want to always conceal under the eyes. So you know, I said always make sure that you're sitting in front of light. You never want to have your light source above a skylight, a, a overhead light. No, no, it will create uh, shadows under the eyes where there were none to begin with. So even if you got uh, 10 hours of sleep, you're going to look like you need another five. So concealer, I like to apply it with a finger. I like to apply it with a tiny dome-shaped synthetic brush. Uh, you choose what works best for you. So oftentimes around the nose, you might need a little, um, or around the mouth. I already did mine. So, uh, and I just barely spot treated myself. Um, 
You can see I've already done the other thing that I like to do to make people look more awake, and that's curl the eyelashes, put on a bunch of mascara, and define the lash line. So I don't need, you do, whether you have a crease or not, you don't need to go in. I mean, it's a beautiful and fun thing to do to put on a different colored eyeshadow, but if you're just looking for baseline, curl your lashes, put on a bunch of mascara, or a coat or two, whatever is more in your aesthetic and then so i like to teach people to find their lash line and accentuate it ever so slightly and you do that with easily with a powder um eyeshadow so i've taken this one from kaya weiss i take a teeny little angled brush and all i did was just define the outer edge of my lash line um, and then draw the line out ever so slightly i did a little along the top too and just smudged it with uh let me see with this dome shaped brush so just a nice little added bit of dimension for my eyes to really stand out on Zoom. And then, you know, they say, and they're right, that eyebrows are the frame of the face. So I don't, I'm not big into giving um, like a block of eyebrow, but I do like that look. So if that's your look and you've got it down, go with it. But if you're just confused and don't know where to start, this is where you start. So taking a spoolie, you want to brush those brow hairs up whatever brow hairs you may have, and assess, do I have any holes? Where would I like more fullness? So those are the different um, questions that I ask myself. Then I go in, so I'm taking this little pot of pomade from EcoBrow, and I ever so slightly start at where the um, highest part of an arch is, or would be, or once was, and I take it down to the tail, and just going more narrow as you go. And then I step back and I assess, do I have any holes? Do I need to fill in in here? Leaving this center area um, somewhat feathery is my favorite thing to do. So keeping it simple, but remembering that that is kind of an anchor of the face. So then um, cheeks, I'm all about drawing the, uh, giving the illusion of an of upturned high cheekbone. So I laid that down with this Westman Atelier. It's, this one is called Peau de Peche. And I used a fluffy, but densely packed brush to really just start on this cheek to really just um, basically outline and then fill in my entire cheekbone. So I'm giving myself this really nice whoosh. Now again, the shape of your face dictates where this is going to be placed and how it will look the best. But basically, you just want to get something on there that gives you a little bit more of a reflective quality because, like I said on Zoom. It's amazing how much it pixelates you, so it's okay on Zoom to go a little overboard. Um, then I like to add color. So whatever your skin tone, if you do love color, you can wear it. Um, and this is how I like to do it. I use a finger, a clean, uh, the finger to apply. Look how beautiful this shade is. This finger to apply, and then this finger to kind of spread around and clean up around the edges. And, um, and then I'm gonna go back in, oh, I love this color, with the beauty sponge and make sure that I have thoroughly just created that seamless canvas. Oh, I love this color. So if you're really shiny, tend to be oily, you're lucky, um, this would be the, the point where you might wanna take a blotting paper, there's a teeny piece of tissue, and just take off any excessive oil in very key parts. So I would say right around here is generally where I powder people. Um, right in the center of the forehead if there's too much oil, which I do love, but I understand. Um, for those who, who are excessively oily, it becomes kind of like your ah. Um, so taking that away at this point would be doable. And then let's talk about lips. So this might be the kind of Zoom call for work where you need a commanding presence and you might want a pop of color on your lips. So go for it. It's like I said, Zoom will pixelate. You don't have to be perfect, but give yourself like a little, a little something, a punch. Or if like me, you want a little bit more of a nudie color, I've chosen a, a lip liner. So I don't want to think about having to do anything to my lips while I'm on the call, right? So I outlined my lips and I start up here and I outline and I take that line ever so slightly over my lips, over top. So I give myself a little more fullness and then I filled in my whole lip with lip liner. But that doesn't always feel wonderful. So in order to keep the color in place and have the comfort factor, then I went in with this long wear lip color from Saint. Gave myself a little more, I love that. And then if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know that I always take whatever's on the cheeks and mix it with the lips and vice versa. 
I'm going back in with this, giving myself a little pop of peach. Oh, I love that color. Did I say that? I step back, assess. I think it's looking good. The only other thing that I want to tell you about is, so I have some friends who just straight up put balm all over their face so that they can have that amazing reflective quality. And that might be something for you to consider about, consider doing, or you could do it strategically. So at this point, at the end is when I say, okay, so you could take a balm like this, take a balm like this, um, and just using a, it sparingly, run it over the very, very high planes. So if you didn't use the Walita skin food, if you didn't put down a highlighter of any sort, um, or if you did and you want more, you could go for it. So it could go on the eyelid, it could go under the brow bone. Uh, this is kind of like the last, it's like the, the icing on the cake. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a really great next Zoom and feel super good about yourself. I'm here if you need me. See you next time.